today I'm going to show how to perform IMAP data migration in Microsoft Office 65 portal. We have our source in a local server and our destination is Microsoft Office 365 server. So to complete the IMAP data migration, we need to complete the prerequisite. So here is our prerequisite. We need to know the local server address or the local server email server IP and we need to collect the local server users email ID and local server users password so first I'm going to log into our admin portal then we click on admin Click on show all then I go to exchange admin center so in exchange admin center there is an option called migration so click on migration so in migration we found that there is an option called add migration batch but before we add any migration batch we click on endpoints so we need to create the endpoints by click on add and we select the migration type we click on imap so we are going to perform the imap migration here now i'm going to give the migration endpoint name let's give it migration imap now we have to give imap server address so in our case you can use the local email server address or you can use the IP so if you know your local email server address you can find the IP just by in your local server so you can find the IP so our recommendation is use the IP address so with the server IP address the authentication is basic the encryption you can try with SSL or TLS uh, uh, depends on your server end and click on accept untrusted certificates because most of the SSL certificate are self generated so and also keep the value as it is so click on create and it creates successfully so in your case if it's not created successfully you might need to change some of the values like you need to change your encryption type it could be TLS or it could be none so whichever works on your server just follow that so after creating the endpoint you can see here is our endpoint now click on add a migration batch so we need to give a name for the migration batch let's say we give it our all user migration and the select maximum migration path is migration migration to exchange online so keep it easy click on next select the migration type we are going to I'm a migration click on next now here is the plan for the migration click on next so migration endpoint we already created an endpoint so we need to select the endpoint click on next now we need to upload a csv file so you can download a csv file and give you an example a csv file format type here in the email address box you give the email address for your local server and in the username address you give the email address for your Microsoft server and the password is for your local server users so just keep that in mind 
and prepare this CSV file according to this and then save it and close it. Please remember that when you perform the IMAP migration, please make sure you created all the users because if there is no users and no licenses so this, this migration will not work so I have the file I previously created so I just browse the file I click on the file click on open and I have 44 users now click on next so keep it that is it it is yeah next so you can add an email id to track down your migration status i mean if it is completed then the user you added in here it will get the email now you can manually start the batch later or automatically start the batch right now or even you can start the batch automatically after a certain amount of time so you can add that and you have a time zone I mean UTC time zone so click on save so after click on save the batch creation is successful so click on done so now you can see the status is syncing so to know that how your migration is successful or failed you can see the status in here you can click on view details on here and you can see the status I mean all the email ID is now validated so it could take some times and uh, you can see after validating it will start syncing as you can see some of the user data is already status is syncing So the migration depends on the users, local mailbox users data size. So if the data is more than 20 GB or 30 GB, it might take some time. So all the users are now syncing. So you can also find out if the user's data is moving from old server to Microsoft server you can click on the mailboxes in here you can click on the users let's say for these users and you can see is mailbox uses so you can check the mailbox uses in here user it's already 0 0.06 MB megabyte so you click on migration with this user the data is syncing data migration is zero byte I mean just give it some time let's see if the status is changing or not go on mailboxes again Click on the users and it might take some time. So again we check for the user. Click on the users and see there was some data. I mean 1.13 MB is coming. So the migration is running successfully. So if we again go to mailboxes and send for the user, I mean after some times, you can see the size will be increasing. So let's see for the other user, yeah it's already coming. So it will complete and once the syncing is complete, the status will be synced. And here is also we found some failed failed status and why it's failed you will see that 
the IMF migration status fail because of the reason of the password of the account is incorrect. So the IMF access is disabled. So that's why it got, you know, uh, got an error. So if you find that, you check on your local server that uh, the email address or the password is correct for those users. And once you can uh, correct this, you can again run on the migration for that for that account you have to you know uh, give the right password in here in your csv box and then you will run the migration again so our recommendation is once you saw the error just correct it down and note it down and, and let the migration for the other users complete and then you will work on the failed uh, accounts so you, you might you know uh, delete those uh, ids from this batch and again create an another csv file and and run uh, these ids separately so that's how you perform an imf data migration in microsoft office portal thank you